Good evening, everybody. Nick Perry, thank you so much for uh, it's a great honor, great pleasure having you. So thank you uh, again for being uh, being our guest. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I'm honored, excited to be here. You know, I was just talking to Yo Evan. You know, it's not every day I get to talk to people in different parts of the world that are doing the same thing I am. So super excited to be here. It's a huge honor, huge honor, Nick. So again, the the the, the group is basically. Uh, um, I know it's what you do. I mean, you do virtual wholesaling, right? So our group, obviously, most of the people are based in Israel. So this is pure virtual. So it connects very well with what you know, what you do. Um, so Nick, I mean, a lot of people, I know they know you, they know what you do, they know who you are. But tell us, you know, people who are seeing you for the first time, can you tell us a bit about yourself, um, how you started, what you do now? So forth. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, humble beginnings. I didn't, you know, come from a family with money or anything like that. It was quite the opposite. You know, growing up, you know, I lived with my dad. He had, uh, you know, paycheck to paycheck. You know, there's a lot of times we couldn't afford groceries and things like that. So from an early age, I realized like, hey, I need to get myself to work if I want to have any money. So I've been working since I was, you know, 14 years old in high school. I did, you know, all kinds of retail jobs. And then uh, right out of college or right out of high school, I was a personal trainer. So I was training a lot of like, well, we can we can see it. We can see it. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, <laughs> I still still work out, you know, almost every day. So, um, yeah, I was training a lot of wealthy clients and I had a full book of people. But I realized, you know what, I'm working all these hours trading, you know, time for money and I'm not I'm not getting ahead. I was only making like 65 grand a year. I'm working a lot harder than my clients that are making you know, two, three million dollars a year. And I said, I got to figure out what they're doing. So all my clients were either business owners or they were in some sort of tech or sales. And I said, well, I need to I need to learn how to you know, build my own business. So that's really where I got like my entrepreneurial bug in me. And um, I moved down to Austin, Texas, from northern Virginia, where I grew up with you know, no jobs, no connections. I just wanted to get out of my hometown that I grew up in. And so uh, moving down there, you know, it was kind of a fresh start, new beginnings where I had to figure out what I was going to do in the next chapter of my life. And through, you know, just researching and soul searching, I came across real estate wholesaling on YouTube um, and really just started taking in information and uh, taking immediate action. You know, I started handwriting letters. This was in 2014, you know, handwriting letters, handwriting bandit signs and putting them up you know, in the community, mailing out letters. And uh, it was a it was a long, slow uh, process for me to get my first deal. It took me 11 months to get my first deal, like really busting my butt, you know, getting out there and trying. Um, you know, I had a lot of adversity up front, but I just didn't give up. And, uh, you know, my first deal, I made twelve thousand dollars and I took all of that, reinvested it back into marketing and then just got a few more deals. And within about 18 months, I was able to quit my corporate job. I used to work at uh, Indeed.com. So while I was doing real estate, I was also an uh, enterprise sales rep for Indeed. Um, did really well there because I was super motivated to get out. You know, I wanted to go in and crush it, put money into my real estate business and do real estate full time. So that's what I did. I got out of uh, corporate America in 2016. And then um, I've been doing you know multiple seven figures since then. I uh, built a really amazing team around me. We do um, property literally nationwide. So we're not just limited to a handful of markets or one market. My um, The way that we market is I blanket the entire United States. So, so that's very interesting. And I think, first yeah. of all, amazing story. Um, Thank you. Nick, I'm, I'm sure you know a lot of people hear it and, and they get inspired. You know, you coming from w the point that you came from and, you know, being in the position that you are today, this is this is this is amazing. Uh, so what you mentioned again in the strategy of, of nationwide PPC, and this is something I assume you developed with time. Is this something you immediately started doing PPC or you you, no, you tested this is, a lot yeah, of different yeah. channels or how did you get to this? Yeah, this is a great story. So I had um, been doing a lot of search engine optimization in like 2015 and I started ranking really well on Google. For organic keywords because I was trying to generate more leads in Texas where I was you know focused but all my search engine optimization started generating leads from all over the country and I would just throw them out so I would throw all, all those leads for you know a year and a half and then one day I was like you know what let's take a shot on one of these leads that are just in a random place so um, 
pretty quickly, like I think within like a day or two, we end up getting one under contract. You know, we sold it. We made like 14 grand and then we're like, okay, that's proof of concept enough. Let's continue to work these leads. And then Google hit me with an, uh, a penalty on my search engine and sent all my SEO back to like page 60. So all my SEO traffic died out. And I was like, well, we need leads. And, you know, I want to um, generate leads, you know, uh, in my home market. But what I found out was it's way cheaper to market nationwide than it is to do it in specific markets. So for instance, if I were to just put a Google campaign in Austin, Texas, I'm probably going to pay three or $400 a lead. But because I do it nationwide, I'm able to get my leads for $25 to $35 a lead. And they're high converting leads too, right? So that's the great thing about PPC is it's all inbound. So, you know, if you look at some of the other marketing channels out there, like, uh, you know, uh, cold calling or SMS or ringless voicemail, it'll take you 40 to 60 leads to get a contract. With PPC, it's like 12, right? So that's amazing. That, that's 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 a completely different. It's a different beast in a sense, right? We have the push marketing, we have the pull marketing, so it's it's a complete different beast. So basically, Nick, what you do is you know you 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 throwing a larger net that eventually allows you to get a cheaper. Uh, Pay per clicks, right? In a sense, right? You, instead of being very focused on, on on pockets or on specific markets, you decided to throw bigger nets all over. I mean, you, if you can tell more about it about this strategy, because I think you know a lot of people, whoever does PPC, I mean, they choose a specific market or they choose some you know markets around it, but you go nationwide, you go all over. I mean, um, yeah. So Google gives you economies of scale, like the algorithm will give you economies of scale by going. Um, in a larger geographical area. Like you're going to get a better cost per lead if you do statewide or if you do nationwide versus, you know, one specific metropolitan area um, or a zip, a zip code. The narrower you go, the higher the cost per lead tends to go. So, you know, that's why I wanted, you know, the lowest lead cost I could possibly get. So that's why I blanket the entire U.S. And back when I started doing this, there was not, there was not anybody out there teaching this, nobody doing this. I would go to masterminds and they tell me I was crazy. You know, you need to stop and get focused. And um, just over time, I got really proficient at being able to evaluate properties anywhere in the country and then also being able to find buyers, you know, all over the country. And that's how I built, you know, multiple seven figure um, wholesaling operation was just by being able to generate those cost effective leads and then systemizing everything and putting the right people in the right seats to you know, handle all of that traffic. That's amazing. That's amazing. So first of all, uh, I know there is a lot of people who follow you and, and there is some people in the group that actually do PPC. So guys, any questions, that's a great opportunity asking Nick. Um, and again, he's, he's, he, he promised he's going to be an open book here. So he's not going to keep any, he's not going to hold anything back. So feel free asking any, any questions um, about, you know, technical questions or any tips that you, you, uh, you want advice from Nick. So Nick, for somebody who wants to, you know, most of us, all of us are virtual in a sense, right? And, and a lot of us, we do push marketing, we do the cold calling, we do the text campaigns. Uh, some do RVM, some don't. And there is also the people that do, does PPC. For somebody who wants to start doing it uh, nationwide or, or start using this strategy, for somebody who wants to start, what 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 is the steps that you, you recommend? I mean, like, you know, the basics do, do's and don't do's in that uh it, it, it launching something like that. Yeah. So, you know, if you're familiar with Google ads, you can get in there and try to do it yourself. I mean, I've, I've spent millions and millions of dollars with Google advertising. So we have a lot of um, people that will come to, to me to help them. We actually offer like coaching and mentorship. If you just want like the easy button, like show you how to get your campaign set up properly and start doing, you know, exactly what I'm doing. Um, we, we provide that, but you know, if you're looking to try to do it on your own, um, you know, I would get um, Google Ads certified. You can go in and take some courses online. I think they're free, actually, to just learn the basics of Google Ads um, and you know, really start you know, implementing some campaigns. But there's a lot of moving parts within yeah. uh, PPC. So it's hard for me to explain to you on like a podcast the do's and don'ts because there's yeah. so many of them. You know, <laughs> I yeah. try to get a few. I try to get a few. Uh, yeah. 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 I'll just I'll tell you like your ne your negative keywords 
um, are very, very important. So everybody thinks like, hey, well, I'm just going to bid on We Buy Houses and that's going to work out great. Well, if you do that, you're probably going to get a lot of irrelevant search traffic coming in. So, you know, through the years, I've built a giant negative keyword list. Um, so all of my traffic that I'm getting is really, really targeted traffic with motivated sellers. I'm not getting a lot of uh, junk traffic clicking on my ads. Understood. Understood. Nick, when going nationwide, and that's a question I think um, I think you meet it on, on daily basis. I mean, obviously, there is pros and cons doing this type of strategy, right? And maybe touching a bit about, you know, the advantages, I think, um, are very clear is low, lower cost, you know, PPC per, per right leads, cheaper leads, um, more, you know, more quantity, I would say, right? Yeah. But we will, we will meet also uh, leads which are in areas that are very going to be maybe very difficult to comp or very difficult after to disposition. Um, how do you deal with that? I mean, is, is this something you meet a lot? I mean, like, you know, rural areas and, and leads. I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is, this is, this is some, this, this comes with the business, right? It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. So, you know, the good thing about Google is you can put um, exclusions into it. So there's 3,300 counties in the United States. And, you know, you can go and pull a list of all of those counties sorted by population and exclude a lot of those super rural counties where, you know, it's going to be hard to comp. It's going to be hard. You know, your cost per lead is going to be slightly higher than it would be if you just let it run completely wide open. But there's ways that you can uh, exclude a lot of those areas that are going to be more challenging, especially in the beginning. Like now I'm to the point where I like those. Uh, smaller markets because there's no competition. We can get really discounted, you know, property, and the demand in you know it, the real estate market's insane right now, right? So we will actually right. flip these properties. We'll go take them down. You know, we'll buy these uh, properties in rural areas as long as there's a, enough buyer demand in in there, and put them up on the MLS, and we get huge spreads doing that, and very little competition in those smaller markets. So. Once you get you, good, you can start going into you know more of these small, you know, smaller, medium-sized cities. Yeah, and that's amazing. I, I think the, the biggest advantage advantage actually is is finding those, you know, under the radar uh markets, right? Like those off off chart markets. Like nobody, like, you know, when we look for a market, we have the, those benchmarks, like you know, some type of population, some type of activity, you know, cash by you know, cash activities and so forth. But those off the radar markets, I think this is. This is amazing. So there's any any parameters that you like is going to be go or no go type of, of, of small pockets like, I don't know, 2000 people, uh, you know, whatever, or you uh, go in. What, my, what my, it, joke, my joke in the office is the town has to at least have a Walmart. Right. <laughs> if it doesn't have a Walmart, then it's uh, that's, that's, then that's a problem. One, yeah, that's one uh, that's one metric right there. But. We also look at the for sales, right? So when we pull up the um, address, we look at what are the properties are for sale in that city and how many saves does that property have on it in what period of time? Because if there's some markets where, you know, even though the United States, the real estate market is on fire right now, there's still some places where there's not a lot of activity. There's just not a lot of demand to go into there. So we can get a barometer and a temperature check on how hot that market is by looking at the for sale activity first and seeing how much activity these pri you know, properties, how long they sit on the market for. Those are all good indicators to look at as well, not just population size. Understood. Understood. Nick, we got some questions. Uh, um, you give is asking, what's the basics of setting up dispositions when you get leads nationwide? Well, how do you how do you prepare the disposition? I mean, how you set it up? Yeah. So, you know, whenever we get a co property under contract, our acquisition agent hands it, uh, does a live transfer to our disposition team to allow them to take over the entire process. So that seller will get literally live transferred over that way they're out of the picture. And now our dispositions agents will build rapport with the seller, set expectations with, you know, how the entire process is going to go, which is very important. And then they'll also, um, get collect photos and get access from the seller. So the majority of the time we're able to get photos from the seller. If we can't get photos from the seller, we'll have a realtor or a local uh, handyman 
go get photos on our behalf. And then um, once we've got photos and access and the seller understands everything, um, we'll go ahead and start pushing that property out in a variety of different ways. Either we'll take it to the MLS and flat fee list it. We'll go and um, reach out to our uh, VIPs because we've been doing it so long. We've got you know, repeat buyers in most areas of the country. Um, or we'll go and I have an extremely large cash buyers list. We'll pull an hour radius around that subject property and run a um, SMS or an RVM campaign. It's actually an RVM with an SMS that goes out with it. And it's very generic. We're not trying to sell property um, over RVM or SMS. We want interested parties, whether it's realtors or um, investors, to actually get on the phone and speak with us. So like our RVM that goes out would say, hey, I just got a property in Austin, Texas. Yeah, I'm here in Miami, Florida. I need to get it moved ASAP. It's distressed. Give me a call as soon as possible, right? So that way it gets the, the realtor investor excited to call back. They call back, you know, hey, what's going on with the property? Now you're having a real dialogue and conversation with this person to gauge their interest level and see if they can help you, you know, if they want to get out there to go see that property. And then obviously when they get out there to see the property, you want to set really good expectations with them because you're not going to be there doing this virtually. So setting proper expectations with the, the uh, realtor or the investor going out there. And also again, with the seller to make sure that they don't, you know, uh, mess up your deal. And then after that, you know, they leave the property, they will, you know, We'll make them reach back out to us as soon as they finish the showing and we'll have a talk. Hey, how'd you like the property? Right. And they'll give us their honest feedback and say, yeah, no, I love it. Um, we got a deal or let me crunch some numbers or, you know, it needs X, Y, and Z that I didn't see in the pictures. And you just start having that negotiation and it's the same thing you guys are doing now. You, know, you get to common ground, send them an assignment, collect their earnest money deposit, send it to title. And then from there, you know, you go to closing and do it all over again. Beautiful, beautiful, Nick. The, the, the point that, um, and again, I, I think it's it's a it's a great uh, way. Some some of the main challenge, you know, walking in rural areas, small pockets, is finding actually boots on the ground. Right? It can be a challenge, and it can be like, uh, you know, it takes time. Right? It takes time finding those people. So, asking the the, the seller doing it. It's 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 a great solution, especially when they called you, right? So it's a better, you know, they called you, right? So you, you're feeling more comfortable telling them, listen, if you can get pictures from me at that point. But when you do those showings, um, are you feeling comfortable the buyers meeting directly with the sellers or there is a... Uh... Yeah, we've just got really good at controlling the sale and setting proper expectations. So we don't have boots on the ground at all for any of our properties. We're just, you know, really good at telling the seller, hey, you know, our partners are going to be out there. They're a third party. It's probably going to be a, a local realtor or an investor or a contractor that's going to you know verify we didn't miss anything in the photos. Um, you know, they're a third party to us. So, you know, don't uh, conversate with them when they come in the house. Just allow them to take their uh, you know, photos and media and get out of there. Uh, does that sound fair enough? And, you know, they'll say, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. And then you tell the buyer on the other side before they go out there that, hey, you know, um, the uh, showing is you know, 2 p.m. on Tuesday. I need you to um, you know, make sure that you're there five minutes early. Wear a mask. We just tell them to wear a mask so they don't talk too much. Uh, <laughs> nice. And uh, then we'll say, uh, you know, Miss Smith is going to be there. You know, she's taking time out of her day to make sure that, you know, she can accommodate you. So make sure that you're there on time and you're respectful, respectful of her time. Remember, this is a distressed situation. So don't ask her any questions. Just go in there, you know, walk through the property, get any photos that you need to, and then give me a call when you get back to the car. Um, also, we've already started title work on the property and we filed an affidavit of interest. That way you don't need to worry about anybody going around you um, in the in the whole you know, transaction. We reserve this for you. Um, so make sure that you do all, all those things. Is that is that fair enough? And call me as soon as you get back to the car and they'll say fair enough. So you're telling them. Call me when you, you know, basically the, the ground rules for not talking to the seller that you've already filed in clouded, you, you started title work in clouded title and that um, they need to call you as soon as they get back to the car. And the reason you tell them that is because 
one, you want to make sure that the showing happens. And then two, that's when you're going to be able to start negotiations. When they get like it. back at the car, that's, oh, great. No, I'm glad. I'm glad everything went well. How'd you like it? And then that opens up the dialogue. So that's how you control, you know, buyers and sellers to make sure that you have um, a smoother transaction. So Beautiful. it's foolproof. I mean, this is business. Nothing in, in life is perfect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's pretty but, but, good. It's pretty good. Yeah. We don't have problems. Like we've had, you know, we used to have issues with, you know, people going around us, realtors and investors screwing up our deals. But, you know, just through trial and error, we've learned how to you know, eliminate a lot of this. Your, your own mechanism and, and be, you know, controlling it in a sense, right? You minimize it. It still can happen. We know it. That's the part of the business, but minimize it and and, and doing so. Um, Nick, are you, do you do also Facebook or only Google? That's another question. No, yeah. um, Google and Bing are going to be like search engine engine traffic is going to be way higher converting than social media traffic. Right. So if you're running Facebook, Instagram ads, you know, can you be profitable and do well there? Yeah, because I've spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands on social media. But just comparing my return on ad spend between the two channels, nothing beats PPC. So that's where that's where I choose to put, you know, our company marketing dollars. Understood. Understood. We have a, we have a question from Shahaf. Hey, hi, Nick. Great to have you. My question is. If you blanket the entire US, this means you have teams of boots on the ground in almost every state. So I think you pretty much answered it saying you don't have any. That's, but no, that's know. craziness. Yeah, you can't have that. You know, you just have to have systems and procedures in place to be able to facilitate, you know, photos and showings. And, you know, you got to have nationwide title companies. So that way you don't have to have boots on the ground because I have, you know, there's 50,000 towns in the United States. That means I would have to have like, 50,000 boots on the ground. It doesn't make sense. So. Yeah, but this is this is a point. And again, I can tell from my own experience, this is a point that I had, you know, in the past trying to, you know, figure uh, I, I did a pilot in the past, like, you know, and, and this th this was a pain point. That was a major pain point because me trying to uh, organize boots and local teams on every place you find a deal, it's crazy. It's it's absolutely, it's mm -hmm. madness, right? I mean, the time and the, the efforts you need to put towards building teams in every small area. So that's that's a great solution. I mean, I'm walking the way, you know, you're figuring it out and trying to do it virtually with no boots at all, if possible, that's that's a great solution. Yeah, um, that's key. You, if you're gonna do, um, you have multiple markets or boots on the ground, uh, if you're gonna do boots on the ground, maybe you're just in like five markets, but if you're yeah. gonna start doing states or you're gonna start doing countries, then you need to have, uh, you need to have just really good processes and procedures in your company. 100%, 100%. We have a question from Nati. I think you, you, you answered that as well. Do you try to avoid rural areas? So you said if there's no Walmart, there is no... <laughs> really, we're looking, we're looking for um, economic activity. So if we see some of these small towns are on fire, right? If they're just so low on inventory that anything that hits the market gets you know multiple offers same day. So we, we're looking for um, economic demand or if it, if it's got a lot of activity like we'll we'll that's really our indicator of if we're going to work it or not yeah I, the walmart thing is more of a joke but yeah know, yeah of course yeah, <laughs> we want the um we want the you know demand to be really strong in that market cuz then that gives us we know that if we get it at the right price we're going to be able to sell it Understood. There's any type of, of, of properties you guys deal with, or it's pretty much anything you can put your hands on. I mean, lands, mobile. I mean, you, you meet a lot of trailers, mobile homes, lands, stuff like that. You deal with it or you, 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 you staying with a single family, you know, the older residential. I mean, I'm making $40,000 on a mobile home on land in South Carolina. I think on Thursday, there you go. tomorrow, you know? So yeah, we look at uh, mobile homes on land. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't really like doing the um, like single mobile homes that are in parks. I'll do them, but they're not. Um, I actually exclude all those like trailer keywords out of my campaign. So we don't get a ton of mobile home leads, uh, but I will. I actually, I mean, my other business, I buy mobile home parks, but um, that's that's a completely outside of wholesaling. So if you guys awesome. got mobile home parks, send them to me. I'm, I'm the end buyer, so. There you go, guys. Whoever finds a mobile park, a mobile home park, call Nick. Anything twenty units and up, I'll I'll take a look at it. Yeah, <laughs> awesome.
Awesome. Uh, Gal is asking, do you Google credits? Uh, do Google credit you for bigger budget? I mean, do, do you get like uh, um, any any type of discount or, or you know? Yeah, I'm just a number to Google, just like everybody else. They don't care. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's Google is huge, so they don't care about my you know marketing budget. They, I get no favoritism by Google now. Gotcha, gotcha. We got a yell asking. I mean, for, if somebody wants to start, would you start with an agency, and what budget is recommended? For okay, this is a great question. Whoever um, put that in the chat, a great question. Yeah, I have. Uh, I've experimented around with a ton of different agencies because as the business owner, I, I'm like, look, there's got to be somebody that's an expert that can do this better than me. But every time I've ever outsourced my PPC to an ad agency, it's always ended up being a disaster and I've had to bring it back in house and just do it myself. Google is not that hard to master. You just it's a few basic principles. Like it, if you guys are running a business already, you can figure out Google, I promise you. That's not outside your wheelhouse. It's a, if you if you're able to run SMS campaigns, you can figure out Google. I promise. So really, yes. <laughs> so do not. My recommendation is do not give your um, your uh, AdWords or any of your digital advertising to an external agency because they're not going to care about it as much as you're going to care about it. And I've never had anybody that's gonna uh, that's been able to beat mine. And all of my coaching students. They've all stopped using um, agencies and they self-manage themselves at this point. So beautiful, beautiful. And and uh, Nick, if, if somebody and again, you know, each each marketing channel, we know there is, you know, I would say some from the experience you have, some type of a minimum that you know going towards uh, 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 you know action like this that you want to bring results. What do you find is like the minimum budget for somebody like to give it a real shot? Uh, that it needs to come with to the table yeah i mean so like for our students that are coming in they always say like hey what's what should i allocate like monthly to ppc and i tell them if you can if you can at least bring 3k really 5k is a good healthy um monthly budget to start with um that that will get you leads coming in that'll probably that'll get you probably you know some deals off of 5k and then you reinvest from there and start to scale your um, ad budget, you know, as you get the return on investment. Understood. So you're saying somewhere between the three to five thousand. Um, yeah. that, that's 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 what you consider uh, uh, an, enough of a budget to give it a real shot for what we do. That would be my recommendation up front. You know, I wouldn't go much higher than that until you master it either. I'd rather you start with like a five thousand dollar budget, master it, get leads coming in optimize your campaigns and then start to build it up to 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, thousand as you go along. Understood. Understood. Can, can we talk a bit more about statistics and KPIs with, with your permission? So people get a, get a better mm -hmm. understanding. I mean, the, why, why is it attractive? I mean, so we mentioned, you know, the budget of around three to 5,000 more towards the 5,000, if I get you correctly, mm -hmm. um, what type of traffic, they should be expecting and and you know cost per lead i mean just just understanding you mentioned around 45 cost well, per lead. My, my performance between 25 and 35 just given it depends on what's going on with google that week but you know coming in realistically like you're going to be you know, if you're doing nationwide you'll be sub 100 dollars, right if you're if you're running over 100 dollars a lead then something is drastic something is wrong right really if you're running over 80 dollars a lead something's probably not set up properly so like the students that we have right now usually like what i've seen on average is they come in they start around like 55 65 a lead and then it comes down from there after they've made some optimizations in their account after some time and then they around you know 40 you know 45 dollars a lead is how it, how it's been playing out for um other companies that i've worked with understood understood and the 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 ratio of closing i mean you mentioned one to 12 was it or that's yeah so company-wide we're like one in 14 but you know like our top closure he's he, he's between one in uh nine and like one in 12. so if you're a really good closer if you're doing this yourself you don't have like a big sales team you're probably going to convert at a pretty high rate you know so there your cost per um contract is extremely low 
compared to other marketing channels. And then nobody talks about this, but your re not only is your return on investment great, but your return on time. Nobody ever talks about that. If you got to go through 40 leads or 50 leads to get a contract with SMS and I only have to go through 12, you know, I'm getting contracts much faster than you. So I actually track how many man hours it takes me to get a contract, which is important. Time is it's very time. important. I agree. Yeah. So that's why we're able to do the volume that we do is because we're not um, having to follow up as much. It's not taking us as much time to get through those conversations to get contracts. That's how we're able to do, you know, consistently anywhere from two to five contracts every single day we're in the office. Amazing. Amazing. And again, I assume also what is important as well doing this type of campaigns is, you know, speed, right? Money tracks to speed. Um, you need people answering the phones, like being actively getting calls, right? I mean, it's, it's, it might be different than other type of campaigns that, you know, they go through a voice message and you get back to them and so forth. Here, you know, that if they left you, if they, you know, Googled you and they pressed, you know, putting you the details to you, they probably did it to a couple of more people. So the name of the game here, speed is much more important, right? Absolutely. I mean, speed to lead is one thing that we're constantly harping on. We track that. You know, if you can get them within the first five minutes, your conversion rate is significantly higher than after those first five minutes. A lot of these folks are highly emotional when they get into the, you know, into this process. They're like, oh, I got this house. I need so many repairs. You know, all right, let me just see what these people will give me. Right. And they're already in that uh, mindset. But also, like you said, they're going to go to other websites and they want to get an offer as soon as possible so they can get that burdensome property off their hands. And what we found is a lot of these people are lay downs. Right. They're going to they're going to lay down to the first person that gives them an offer. A lot of times they just want the situation squared away. Yeah, they don't really want to shop. They just OK, you're going to give me sixty five thousand. All right, fine. Let's just get it over with. And you call them first. I mean, you, you got hold of them first, right? And, and so Correct. this is where your chances to do business with them is, is you know, is increasing. Dramatically, yeah. You're going to yeah. convert at a much higher rate if you can get to those leads within the first five minutes. I mean, when I was doing this by myself, I would, I would lock up deals at, you know, one o'clock in the morning. I didn't care that it was 1 a.m. If somebody submitted a lead, I would I would literally pick up the phone and, hey, John, I just got your uh, information. This is Nick. <laughs> I want to sell now. And I, and I would, I would do it. I didn't care. I was laying in bed. I'd lock up a deal, you know? And that person says, listen, if this, those guys called me 1 AM, those, those are, those guys are serious, probably serious. So yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So that's, that's that important though. Absolutely. Amazing. Amazing. We got you Gav asking uh, as well, what kind of landing pages do you see walking for you in Google? Is any, any. Yes. So um, landing pages are crucial in uh, making sure that you're not paying overpaying for cost per click because Google is really, really big now on mobile optimization and uh, page loading speed. So if you don't have a really fast site and you can go check your website right now for free, if you just go to page speed insights, like by Google, you can put your URL in there. And if you have a slow mobile or if it's like, it's literally just like a chart and it's red, yellow, green, if you got yellow or red, um, you're you're not uh, doing. Very you don't want to be there. You want to be in green at all times. So check your website right now. Um, a couple uh, places that I would recommend if you're looking for a really fast landing page. In Lyft is a software that we use for dispositions, but they also give you a seller lead landing page too, super fast, um, and that works tremendously well. So Investor Lyft. I actually have, if you just go to nickperry.investorlift.com, it'll give you a discount on it. You can do a demo if you want. And then um, Gold Level Media is a um, another, it's just a basically, that's what they do is they build landing pages and do marketing and stuff. But Gold Level Media out of Phoenix, Arizona, um, they're going to just charge you one time to build the, um, build the site for you. It's going to be expensive. It's probably going to be like 2,500 bucks or something like that. But if you're going to be running money through Google, don't run it through a site that has slow loading speed or isn't properly optimized for mobile. Understood. Understood. Thank you. Uh, Shirley is asking, is it one in 12 leads to contract or one in 12 leads to close deal? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. So one in 17 is our leads to close deal. 
we co we close at a very high rate just because we're really good at underwriting the properties and making sure that we take detailed notes and give accurate repair estimates and accurate offers. That's the most important part of making sure you're not dropping a lot of uh, deals because you can lock up a lot of junk deals if you don't know how to make accurate offers. So, yeah, yeah. So, Th that's true. That's true for any type of marketing and it's true for our line of business in general, but it can definitely bo me bo be more, you know, important when dealing with those pockets and, and niche areas that you need to know what, you know, what price you should be getting, right? Just nationwide in general, you have to understand, you know, the different um, variables in each market, right? A, a St. Louis, Missouri is going to be different than a Los Angeles, California, right? The buyers that are going to be purchasing, you know, in LA, they may be, you know, purchasing at 85 cents on the dollar, where at, in like a St. Louis, you know, those, those buyers, they want to be 70 cents on the dollar all in. You got to know those kind of things and you just get to know based on you know, different economic variables and supply and demand. You can get a good gauge on it. There's not like a spreadsheet or a formula to figure that out. You just start to get a feel for it as you get more experience. Yeah. Also by actively talking to people, you know, even all mm -hmm. sellers reaching out and buyers and understanding better, you know, what the buyers at the end of the day are looking for. Right. What 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 type of returns they're looking on their investment that will give you a better ballpark figure where you need to be positioned on your deals, right? Correct. Yep. So that's really important. And then obviously making sure you have a rock solid disposition process, which means being able to set proper expectations. That's where you're going to run into a lot of uh, issues on Dispo is sellers wanting to back out, you know, buyers, you know, messing up your deal, title issues, right? Those are big variables and dispositions that you have to account for. So make sure you, you know that and you address all those issues set proper expectations with all parties, uh, make sure you're in a good communicating uh, communication cadence with everybody involved in the transaction. And um, that's going to eliminate a lot of those issues with a seller trying to back out or, you know, things like that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the biggest take here is, is one of, you know, when walking nationwide, everything is in scale. So you must have processes in place right you need to have specific processes that you need to know you know you know dealing with every type every facet in the business right because everything is in scale right i mean it's different markets finding title companies communicating with them communicating with you know everything is in scale so you, i'm sure you have processes set up for every facet in the business yeah and you know we have nationwide title companies that you know we use and things like that so there's that and this has all been learned over time through a lot of blood sweat and tears and you know, um, lost deals and lost revenue. And so, yeah, I've learned all, all this stuff, you know, written in blood. Yeah. Yeah. How to learn a lot of the hard way. Good, good, good. Um, Nick, um, I see there's no more question guys. Last questions for Nick. Okay. How many closed on one to three? Eyal, Eyal is asking how many closed on one to three calls and how on follow-up? Um, Great question. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. So um, with pay-per-click advertising, you know, we're getting uh, we're getting properties under contract in about three to four calls max. So the majority our lead um, from the, the, the time frame that we get properties under contract is much shorter than telecommunications. So, you know, with telecommunications, there's a lot of follow up involved to get those properties. Right. Sometimes there's 60 to 90 days of follow up on average with a lot of companies from the time a lead comes in to the time you have it contracted with PPC, it's three days. So that's another huge KPI. Which that, is that's yeah. I mean, obviously success. shorter yeah. time to, to follow up in your deals. It, again, it's less hours being spent, less man hours. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Um, Nick, for somebody you want to learn more about it, um and and get more the understanding of it and you know if you want to start and and you know take his steps um being nationwide ppc what what you know how i understand you also you have a course you're running how they can people reach you to get better understanding of how they can get you know enter this this type of marketing and get the ball rolling yeah you know i'm always trying to provide value in any way i can so if you, if you don't follow me on social media, it's just Nick Perry REI on Instagram. Um, you can follow me there, just Nick Perry REI. And I'm always trying to put out good information and serve the community. And then if you're looking to 
you know, really just get some guidance and, and get you to the finish line as quickly as possible and getting everything set up and scaled. Um, I designed an entire mastermind called the seven figure cartel. It's all online. Um, so you're able to do it, you know, right from there in Israel. I know a lot of you guys are there in Israel. Um, so we uh, meet up every two weeks on Zoom and I'm literally speaking with you like I am right now and going over your specific challenges in your business and addressing them every two weeks to make sure that you're not getting stuck in any facet of your business. And I want to know, you know, exactly what's going on. Good, bad, ugly, everything. We hash it out right then and there. And um, it's been great. We have a we got a, a growing uh, member base of really uh, smart uh, entrepreneurs that are, a lot of guys are doing multiple six figures already. Um, so that's been incredible. And in addition to like the actual coaching where I'm hand holding you the entire way, I give you my entire blueprint as well. So self-study uh, you know, videos that you can go through and learn every single uh, part of my business from marketing, acquisitions, dispositions, finances, hiring, firing, literally, you know, I don't hold anything back. So um, we give you amazing PPC help, all that stuff. Yep. Amazing. So guys, feel free, whoever, you know, want to get these, his actions in PPC and nationwide. I mean, this strategy, obviously, it's a very interesting one. Reach out to Nick. And Nick, again, thank you so much for exposing us to a different, you know, a new type of marketing, a new type of strategy, knowing it's out there. Um, we definitely got better understanding, you know, how it works and what it works. And uh, it was great, great having you, Nick. I mean, we'll be happy also having you in the future, obviously, uh, you know, hearing more about it and how, you know, getting tips and tricks uh, in, in the PPC uh, sphere. Um, so thank you again, Nick. Yeah, no, I would like, yeah, anything you guys need, just reach out to me. You can send me a direct message. I think it's really cool what you guys are doing over there from Israel, virtually wholesaling in the United States. Like, I know, I know there's a lot, a lot to learn with the cultural differences and you guys are crushing it. So keep up the good work and reach out to me. Let me know if you guys need anything. <laughs> Thank you again, Nick. It was great having you, and we, we talk soon. I'm sure you know people will reach out. See you soon, buddy. Thank See you ya. so much. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.